Hi everyone, this is Chavi, the podcaster of the day, and today I am back again with our yet another podcast series. And now in our today's podcast, we have Paul with us. He is a Microsoft technical trainer and uh, obviously working at Microsoft. When it comes to his experience, he is actually a marvelous person. Since he ha- he uh, has an experience of over 15 years in the IT industry, and talking about his experience and the stuff that he did, he recently uh, like wrote a very amazing book which is related to Azure uh, exam guideline only guide. So basically, it's it's a a very great book that you can have a look into it and understand more about that particular exam so obviously we would be taking further conversation from paul that let's hear something about him so hi paul how are you doing hi hi i'm very well how are you doing thanks for having me i'm also doing great now first of all i would be very happy to know about your journey how you started up that because when it comes to microsoft it's always a dream job and a dream company as well so how you started your journey and how is it currently going on in the present time thank you so started the journey as an infrastructure engineer at microsoft after being an architect elsewhere and that was all on premises so nothing to do with the cloud i knew nothing about the cloud at all and then as the strategic direction of the company went to more of a cloud focus with azure i had to start learning azure and throughout that i got more involved in the um development side of things so supporting software developers uh developing solutions for azure as is the name of the exam so i got certified in the exam and i you know obviously did did quite a bit of work with customers in that space and i got approached to write the book or co-author the book and I realized that actually I needed to ramp up I needed to learn a lot about the technology and the book was a challenge for me to learn the technology and it worked really well I think uh the the process of writing the book gave gave me so much knowledge about Azure um and during that process before the book was actually released I went into this role as a Microsoft technical trainer so it must have worked pretty well that's actually great to hear and uh, obviously like writing a book is not at all an easy task i would say now moving uh, with our amazing questions i wanted to know that like uh, what are your current roles and responsibilities as a technical trainer like obviously as you mentioned that uh, you learn about azure right so in that case like when it comes to being a technical trainer like microsoft technical trainer so what are the things that you do and in in your Are like present times? Are you like learning and implementing stuff side by side in your uh, work profession? Yeah. So in terms of the the first part of the question, the roles and responsibilities. Uh, primarily, it is um, helping our sort of enterprise customers um, get certified. The idea is that the more certified people our customers have, the more likely they are to actually. make the best use of their azure investments so to actually pass the exam and not just the az204 that we're talking about now but other exams as well uh we have a very structured curriculum um so myself and alex as well who you've spoken to uh we both deliver um microsoft official curriculum courses to help prepare people for the exams and also internally we have a lot of initiatives as well sharing uh you know experience and trainings for peers that maybe have a focus in a different area and they want to upskill to our area of expertise for example and the the second part of your question uh it, as far as the implementation most of the implementation is around and it's the same for most of my colleagues i think as well is around building stuff that we can demonstrate during the courses because we find that a lot of customers resonate and learn a lot more when we're able to show quote unquote real life scenarios where they use all of these um tool sets so for me that's what I do a lot of is I build out demos uh, in as close to production uh, sort of setting as possible and then share that uh, among the team as well 
that was really great to hear that and uh, moving with that uh, like again as you mentioned about learning and implementing thing right so i would be very happy to know that while writing the book let's because now i wanted to keep the conversation around the book only because the book is something uh, which is fascinating me the most because obviously like you are working what was the purpose of writing a book <laughs> oh it's actually nice so uh, like i want to know that how was your experience in writing the book and also like is it the case that you knew everything before writing the book or you just l- learn implement learn implement thing that you did so it's a really good question uh no i didn't know everything at all not even close um so we so w- when we were building out the structure of the book um we had to consider obviously the exam objectives and we considered we actually moved a few things around in what could be potentially considered a more logical way to the official training as well uh obviously we couldn't just reuse the official training or anything like that so we we produced this logical structure that we felt would make more sense to actually really build upon exist like knowledge as you go through so it's like cover to cover although you can take each section isolated we kind of tried to structure it in a learning journey so you learn some fundamental information um that you can then build upon instead of the other way around right which is how it's officially uh structured which is kind of weird and in doing that we had to do quite a lot or i certainly had to do quite a lot of research about topics that i wasn't too um knowledgeable about which was more than i care to admit um so i had to do a lot of studying for that and then when it actually came to writing it essentially for me it was a process of okay here's my topic because obviously i i i wrote 50% alex wrote 50% here's my topic let me get a ridiculous amount of links let me go through all the documentation i possibly can let me build out all the demos i can so that i can this is before putting any proverbial pen to paper build out all the demos get as much of a really good understanding in, in sort of a production setting as possible and then based on my learnings and how i logically structured my own learning to start from like a baseline of next to nothing not for all of the topics but for a lot of them uh and then based on that experience and i think that put me actually in a good position where i didn't know it all so then i knew what worked for me in my learning journey and then translated that onto the page so that's kind of how most of the chapters work there were obviously some chapters that i had a decent amount of knowledge in um but yeah that's kind of how the process worked for me as each chapter was taken in isolation learn everything i can make sure to prove my knowledge uh, and then put pen to paper that was actually fabulous to know and it was really great thing that you just mentioned now would love to know that uh, you as you mentioned you learn you implement right so which was the easiest and which was the hardest topic because this is the thing that actually comes into the picture main thing because when you were like okay now i'm learning the whole thing but it's so difficult to first of all learn it and implement it and then write it for the developers who wants to just get help so the easiest i would probably say was the topic of uh i would probably say virtual machines that part not not the chapter not the entire chapter because the infrastructure as a service was huge but virtual machines that's something that's quite prevalent and i've had a lot of experience with that so that was kind of the easiest one and the documentation had everything i needed obviously um bit of a bit of a, a promotion there of the microsoft learn documentation uh, so that was probably the easiest one i would say the most difficult for me my there was probably two actually containers i really didn't have a fantastic knowledge of and that took ages like far longer than i had hoped to write because i really wanted to make sure i had a decent depth of why containers exist how they work on quite a deep level and then build out as many demos so that i, I you know break things to fix things to understand how they work so that was one but the the most difficult i think was actually the i think it's chapter 3 um app services might actually be chapter 2 <laughs> um and no, app services which ever chapter that one is because as part of that although i had a decent understanding of app services as a whole and app service plans the authentication and authorization part of that like the user authentication flow especially 
um, which then also got built into the later chapter where we talk about authentication and authorization. I thought I had a really good understand or a decent understanding of how the authentication flow works. Uh, when I had to write about it, I was proven wrong. So I had to actually engage quite a few colleagues, like internal Microsoft colleagues, which was great. So shout out to Ira, uh, Ira Rainey in Microsoft. He was really good, showed me his own code that shows this properly. And then with that, although I didn't use any of his code in the end, that really, really helped me. And actually, it's, it's, a, it's one of the topics I get comments on now when I'm training this course, the AZ204 um, sort of prep course, is that I go into more detail and seem to have a lot more knowledge about authentication and authorization than some other people do. So clearly the process worked, but that for me was a real challenging one. It, it was it was like if we take a timeline, like and you would expect like more of a linear sort of um, direction of page count, right? It was very flat, very zero for ages while I'm trying to get an understanding and then it just spiked right at the end. So that was a big challenge, especially when we consider time restraints and things. Got it. That was challenging and fun at the same time, I guess. And uh, I guess the listeners going to be very much happy to listen that what were the challenges that you have faced? Because obviously you are working, a prof you are actually a working professional. So how you actually man manage the time and also the challenges that you had, like, for example, you are learning and implementing. Apart from that, there are like personal life as well that you have. <laughs> so how you managed everything so nicely? so nicely might be a bit generous and um, they didn't start off so nicely <laughs> uh it, it was that was a massive learning experience in, in itself like how to first of all the time management which i'll talk about in a second but the motivation you know it's the learning is great the learning is fun and everything for yourself from a selfish perspective but then when you have to try and structure your thoughts and your learning process in a way that can help other people sometimes when you've had a long day at work or whatever, and especially if like the weather's gloomy, you know, it's cold and you're just like, you know what, I just want to eat pizza, or eat ice cream and just chill. Um, so that was difficult. That was difficult as well, sort of going, OK, I need to do this. But what I found actually really helped me in my personal and professional life now, actually, was the discipline that you kind of have to get when you're doing something like this, which is very time bound to say, well, okay, I'm going to log off between this time and this time. That's me done with work. And there's a lot of com you know conversations potentially and meeting changes and things like that you may have to do, but that's what I ended up doing. Otherwise I'd just work until like 8 p.m. or something and have barely any time for writing. So it allowed me to structure my time or it kind of forced me to structure my time so that I knew for, you know, within a certain you know, 30 minute window or something, exactly what I was going to be doing. Um, and it actually helped in a lot of ways. So so I was, my work life balance in terms of my, my paid job was much better as a result, because I kind of had to. Then I would structure it so I'd finish work, I'd eat, I'd then do some exercise within that period of time, and then I would write. So it actually helped me get more exercise, well actually some exercise, <laughs> um, which was sort of rare. Um, so that was that was something, and then that carried on. So I would have a structure in the writing process of, you know, learn, get all of the documentation, all the notes and things that I need to do, build out all the demos that I need to do, make relevant notes. And then that was kind of my format ready. And then with that time boxing that I did as close as possible, that allowed me to have a nice flow as the, um, as the rest of the book progress. That's actually amazing to hear. And also like when it comes to this book writing, are there any future plans that you have in your mind or like is it just first and last book that we are expecting you had to ask that question um <laughs> so i i'm def I, I don't have any plans right now as far as which book but certainly i'm not i'm open to writing another book um i just need to i i don't i want to work with pact again really so i don't i wouldn't want to go with any other publishers because we and we can talk about, about that uh, in a moment if you want to but they were so fantastic and we got such a great relationship i would only really want to go with pact and currently the only other exam i would want to potentially write a book on right now already exists from pact <laughs> so i'm kind of waiting biding my time until i've got something interesting to write if that makes sense or, or more valuable for the marketplace and then uh 
yeah, I'll if Pact don't approach me, I'll probably approach Pact and say, hey, I'm ready, let's let's go for it. But yeah, no no immediate plans, but definitely uh, I'm open to it if people want it. That was amazing, good. Obviously, there we cannot like have it in our mind, but that's fine. Now I would be very happy to conclude this podcast with the three learnings that you have received from your experience of being an author. Three learnings. So, the first one was the discipline. I think the time management and the uh, sort of structure that that helped a lot, and it helps in my, like I say, personal and professional life. Second one has to be the technical topics. That was that was huge for me because again, I, I didn't know all of this stuff before writing the book. Um, and I think the, the third is along the same lines as the first, I suppose. But it was a big point for me is you can still be super productive and do so much that maybe you didn't realize before if you actually consider your time very carefully. If that makes sense, like. I, sometimes I was seeming in my head, you know, potentially getting stressed or whatever, you know, and feeling overwhelmed with I'm working all the time. And then it's not always the case. It's not always possible. But I certainly through a lot of work and negotiations with people to leave me alone after a certain period of time. It was great to realize that actually the 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 pot of time that I have after work, instead of you know Netflix or whatever uh, every night or something like that. I can fill that with being really productive, and for me, that was—it seems obvious to a lot of people, I think. But for me, I was always head down in work until late at night, and being able to step back and kind of force myself to to have that time structure. One, I learned about the time structuring uh, really well, but also just how much time you can potentially have and what you can fill with that time is is was a big learning for me. that was really amazing and to be honest the it was really great having you for this podcast talking about with a lot of about a lot of stuff which is actually real first of all people think that you are a microsoft employee you have so many things in your hand what's bad in your life you just published a book that was so easy but no it was not there are a lot of things which were going on in your head it it's not just about the success so thank you so much paul for joining in today and it was really great having you today for the podcast i really love talking to you and i'm pretty much sure the listeners going to love it and i have also dropped the uh, book link and also his linkedin link in the description below the uh, you can check out and do connect with him thank you very much been a pleasure i uh, look forward to working with you again in the future if i do another book Obviously, would we'll be very happy to have you again for our Azure Developer Communities initiatives.